Hello everybody, I am back with Jack and Alessio from Riverhorse and today I'm sure you can guess again we're looking at The Hunger Games, uh, The Mockingjay. So, uh, this is an interesting one for me because you're actually going for, I believe it's the third in the trilogy this game's based on? Third and fourth, really, mm. but actually it's about the whole, the whole trilogy so on. Mm. Well, I mean like, it's, it's a big board. I'm going to say that right now. This <laughs> takes up quite a bit of real estate on it, your gaming table. It fits. It fits. It does fit. It will fit on your kitchen table. But what we're seeing here is the entire map of the districts, yeah? Uh, yeah, so this is Pan Am, mm -hmm. which is sort of North America after in the distant future, mm. um, where it's controlled by the capital, mm -hmm. and the resistance are fighting against that. Right, and well, for ev ev anybody at home who doesn't know exactly what they would be doing during this game, what is the objectives? Um, so it's a two-player game, mm -hmm. or a two-sided game. And you have the resistance, mm -hmm. who are the plucky, up-and-coming rebellion, mm -hmm. uh, trying to fight against the oppressive capital, mm -hmm. who uh, are trying to hold on to these twelve districts. So, mm -hmm. um, the twelve districts, each of them gives a different type of resource to the capital, mm -hmm. and the capital is sort of in charge and keeping them all down and making them fight each other in yes. um, horrible tournaments called the Hunger Games. Yep. Do we have any of the, the actual Hunger Games in here or is this the, the overall campaign to actually so you know, this take is over? A, this is actually the, the sort of the war, the civil mm. war um, for freedom and uh, mm. from the oppression of the, the Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. um, there is uh, one of the sort of actions you can take in the, as the capital is, is to sort of run a Hunger Games ah. as a sort of... Um, Okay. Uh, which can sort of so um, put down put down rebellion as okay. <laughs> right. please. Alessio, I have to ask, what drew you to this particular one? Well, oh, this for me, I have to say, as a designer <laughs> <laughs> <What cat? laughs> Yes, Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, no. Um, it was um, you know, as a designer I always wanted to have and design a game like this because when I, when I grew up I I loved playing games like Axis and Allies, Fortress America, those games, those uh, those games would have tons of little toy soldiers, you know, mm. where you have on, entire armies on the, on the table and you basically it's just a high level strategy game like that. It, my favorite game, I mean, when, I, when I was young, really, mm. I loved those. I played them a lot, you know, from Risk, on all, all, mm -hmm. all of those. So actually, this is the first time that we have the, the power, the might, and the resources to make something like this <laughs> with so much stuff in it and uh, all, this, all this little, you know, and you have the flyers and, mm -hmm. the, and the troops and the characters, of course. Of course. And, of course. So no, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff there. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, you've given me some images to actually start cycling through here. So the first one, I believe, is the main game board and what's going to come in the, the beginning of the Kickstarter, yeah? Yes. Yes. So uh, what you see there in the bottom left is um, Katniss and uh, Snow, the sort of the two heroes, mm -hmm. um, or characters, I guess. Uh, Snow can't really be described as a hero. Well, the, <laughs> the faces of the faction. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> let's, let's, of, let's try that way. Uh, <laughs> the leaders. The yes. iconic characters. And so um, what they do is they sort of go on missions throughout the, the game, mm -hmm. be they sort of tactical or propaganda or mm. gathering intel and sort of affect the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the scope of, of the battle. Right, and so I'll, I'll assume your troops fight, but the, the faces of the faction, they're there for the more political reasons then, or do they actually get involved in combat? Well, not uh, literally fighting, but uh, like Jack was saying, there are there's kind of two levels. There's the actual combat, but there's also the mission mm. phase, where actually the outcome of your missions, so that you can send all sort of different characters on these missions. And some of them will be better at some things, and you know, Captain is very good for propaganda, for example. Of course. Yeah. And, and so th the, the outcome of those missions will influence then the battles, mm -hmm. because they influence morale of the troops, the morale of the population. Uh, yes. okay. So uh, you have to have, you're running missions and fighting at the same time, mm -hmm. and the two of them are quite uh, strongly linked. In fact, we have a, a game mode where it is a four-player mode, mm -hmm. where you effectively have uh, two guys on the side of the capital, two guys on the side of the resistance. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, one guy is in charge of the military, mm -hmm. so he does the the actual fighting, sending troops, etc. The other yeah. guy is in charge of like uh, secret ops, oh. so he does the missions. That that could be very interesting. And, and, the, and, so and never the twain shall talk. So you're not allowed to talk oh, tactics. So the, the, the left hand doesn't know yeah. what the right hand's doing. And you, you can agree, of course, at the beginning mm -hmm. and on a general strategy, but then when you're in it, because your guys on the mission that mm -hmm. would be maybe out of contact, etc. So the great thing is actually trying to work together, kind of thinking. Right, I think he's going to do that and sending a mission mm -hmm. there, etc. So I'll better help him. Oh, right, okay, I'll, I'll, so I'll, 
I think he's going to attack that district, so I'd better try and seek mission there so that actually his troops are more effective, or maybe I can uh, neutralize some of the enemy air force or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so working together in that way is very interesting. It's very like bridge <laughs> type style. Yeah, but it's it's that whole idea of you know you have those those breakdowns in communications. You know maybe sometimes the message doesn't get through. The troops go to the wrong location. <laughs> You know, and you're standing there in the middle of nowhere where there's no fighting going on, about to shoot a <laughs> propaganda video going, well, we won! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that, isn't it? We did give a bit of a tone of, uh, mm. you know, this is all seen maybe from the, from the, from the, from the capital point of view. It was like, mm. there's been a disturbance in District 6, but no problem. It's been, you know, the, the, uh, the insurgency has been um, kind of pacified. <laughs> you, you never say literally what's going on there. Yeah. You? You know, it, it's peaceful there now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Okay, uh, so some of the key things you're on about here. So we've got some cards that are going to tell us what we're up to. So what are these? Uh, so this is the core of the game. Mm. Um, you are trying to, if you're playing as the resistance, mm -hmm. you are trying to get all of these cards, the district cards, mm -hmm. to be the other way this up. This color. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this side up. Um, so they all start apart from your HQ. Yeah, um, so this controlled, one yeah. Uh, controlled by the capital. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end of each turn, yeah. uh, you roll for the districts. Mm -hmm. uh, you roll a d12. Okay. And if you roll under the number of rebellion counters in that district, mm. it flips over to the I see. Uh, resistance side. Uh, you gain some um, infantry there. You sort of uh, and you get this sort of snowball effect as yeah. more more districts turn yeah. the resistance. So gets, some of uh, the yeah, that's the reason there is a, a massive pile of resistance troopers here. Indeed, yes. they will turn out. So, I mean, you'll see Air Force. this board at the beginning of the game looks very unfair. Yeah, <laughs> uh, everything is capital. The capital have like, more troops. They have um, bigger guns, and they mm. control everything. And even even in the first thing the capital do in the first turn is they will activate all of these districts, I see. and they will get more troops, and they will get uh, to lock down areas, and they will mm. really. Start to mess with the, mess with the resistance. So you're in the pressure cooker from the go in this game. Yeah. So the capital really have the the um, uh, the advantage to begin with, but mm. that doesn't stay. And so slowly the resistance will maybe pop something over here, and that'll mm. mean that they can mess around over here whilst the capital they can either go okay, well we need to push forward here and just mm -hmm. try and try and end this and get this before this whole co thing yeah. collapses, or I can go deal with that, but then I'm not pushing here and yeah. Um, so you, you do get that real sense of the, the combat that there was within the movie, you know, of the, the districts beginning to rise up against the oppressive regime. Yeah, yeah it's very symmetric. It's a very mm. symmetric game, and certainly the, the resistance excels at the, at the special ops. The special ops, is, they are better. They have more heroes, more mm. characters, and, and while the capital it relies more on brute power, just, mm. you know, just send you know, lots of peacekeepers to... So more of a military might against a more agile force. They're mm. more maneuverable. The resistance are more stealthy, more maneuverable, and better at that, uh, special missions, basically. So they play in a very different way. Cool. Well, I mean, like, I, I do like the idea that every time I sit down to play this, as, say, I'm playing the resistance, I can choose a different tactic as to where I want the, bege the beginnings of the rebellion to happen to see mm. how it snowballs out from different locations on the map. Sounds yeah. very, very interesting to me. Right, uh, we also have some more cards here, so what are these? Okay, so um, there's two ways to sort of influence this. Mm -hmm. um, you move your troops around mm -hmm. to secure district, and the other thing you do is you play action cards, or mission cards and operation cards. Mm -hmm. um, these ones? So that's what these are here. And um, so on the left we have a mission card, that's for the um, uh, resistance, mm -hmm. and on the right we have a an operation card for the capital. Mm -hmm. So these are played into these um, spaces here, so you can only ah, have so one per area. Um, and when you play those, mm -hmm. you also commit heroes into there, so mm -hmm. they basically try and complete these missions, mm -hmm. uh, and they might give themselves um, more mobilization, giving, mm -hmm. allowing you to sort of um, move off to the side when yeah. they thought you were going to be somewhere else, mm -hmm. or it might give you a bonus to the battle, and you mm. might get a um, bonus yeah. there. But not only can you play your heroes onto them, mm -hmm. they can play their heroes onto your cards to yeah. try and stop that from happening. So it's never, you don't play an action card and it happens, you mm. play an action card for the chance to something happen. So it's sort of, there's a mini contest there before the big battles. Yes. And then looking at the That's characters that. themselves, uh, President Snow has some pretty decent stats Oh, there. he's a big one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, 
So it's a polyhedral system, mm -hmm. um, and each each character has uh, has a polyhedral dice sort of mm. associated with them, yes. and each um, mission has a skill associated with it. So yeah. there's three skills: mm -hmm. tactics, intel, and propaganda. So tactics is their sort of ability to focus the fighting, mm. and generally those missions are about combat. Yeah, intel is more about maneuvering and mm. sort of getting around and uh, outwitting the enemy, mm. and generally. The cleverer characters have that, that skill. And then yeah. propaganda messes about with these um, rebellion tokens, ah, the mostly. Tokens. Okay. So the well, I mean, like, being able to explore uh, a piece of intellectual property like this, it has such striking visuals to it that I'm, I'm really curious to see what you guys sit down to do with this. Because th if this is just the base that I'm seeing on the table, this is a very fun looking, very complete game. So I'm very curious to see where you would expand on from this. But uh, I think we'll maybe have a talk about that a little bit later. So uh, as for right now, uh, guys, this will be coming to Kickstarter shortly. Make sure if you are a fan of The Hunger Games to go and check it out. Uh, we will, of course, be talking about it, making some noise about it on the weekenders and stuff. Check it out. We'll move on. We will see you a little later. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.